so I've already got the oil changed and everything's running so for breast milk it's kind of different because we don't want the temperature to exceed body temperature so you're gonna customize your settings let's see if I can do this while I'm on the phone I dropped mine to 95. You could probably do 100 and be fine since human body temperature is 98.6, but I like to err on the side of caution, and I do 95, then hit dump. So we're going to start. We're going to say non-liquid because it's already frozen, and it's pre-frozen. Now it's going to pre-freeze. We're ready to go. So then all you have to do is lay out your milk bars on the tray. And like I said, it's about 12 of the Medela 5 ounce or even flow 5 ounce per tray, plus a little extra room. Okay, so the freeze dryer is loaded and as you remember, we did the 95 degrees for the maximum shelf temperature. And we're just going to run this on a full cycle. I don't adjust the cycle length because what's going to happen is after a full cycle, we're going to come in and we're going to chop it up to break it up so that it better freeze dries the center core, which is likely still going to be frozen in the bigger bricks, but not the smaller ones. So really, once the pre-freeze is done, we just put this in here. And it's, it's as easy as that. We've got milk here. I'm going to do this without dropping it everywhere. Woo! Um, it's all in here and remember I did all the weights so I have my total wet weight that's what I call it the total wet weight and we're gonna need that at the end because in order to calculate what we need reconstituted we have to have the wet weight and the dry weight so make sure you write those numbers down don't forget them because you're not gonna be able to figure out how to reconstitute it otherwise so now we just hit start make sure the drain valve is closed and it is continue it's going to deep freeze it, so it's freezing right now. And then it's going to kick on the vacuum process. And this will run for a day or two. And then we're gonna come chop it up and we're gonna run it for another 12 hours and then it'll be done. So it's kinda loud, but that's the freeze dryer for you. Um, it's been less than 12 hours as you can see and it's already drying. I did not use the pillow because I'm not in a hot climate. I'm in Alaska. And I wanted to be able to show you guys what it looks like. You can see that it's already starting to crack because it's drying. Let's see. And we've moved on to final dry. It probably kicked over just a little while ago. Because um, it's usually about 12 hours or so. It's been in for 39 hours. So this will be done right before bed tonight. As you can see it's cracking. That's normal. Don't freak out about it. It should be. If it wasn't cracking, I'd be worried. So, so right before bed, I'm going to come out here and take this out. And I'm going to cut it up with the stainless steel putty scraper. I'm going to chop it all up and then put it back in for another 12 hours. Okay, so the full cycle is run for the one we just did. Um, it took a total of 48 hours for that. You can check the time right up there. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this fancy dancy stainless steel, basically a putty scraper. Um, it's only been used on milk. I bought it specifically for chopping my milk. Um, we're gonna take this and we're gonna chop up the milk. Sounds stupid, but it works, trust me. So in order to take it out, like if I do this, the door is not gonna open because there's a vacuum seal here. You can see the darkness right there. Um, we have to open the drain valve. Whee! handy dandy dude right here you can't really see it but you know it's a drain valve and I'm gonna open it it's gonna make a rushing sound don't have it near anything that it could potentially suck up so I kind of like hold it in the air until it stops and you can hear the ice cracking um, that's along the edges because of all the warmth thing. at least I assume it is I don't know I'm not a scientist so anyway I'm gonna take this out, I'm gonna show you guys this part. So as you can see, we have these like basically milk briquettes. Um, the only thing is because they were frozen in this big of an amount, um, they're not going to dry all the way through without chopping them up. And that's why I have this fancy little scraper. So it's only ever been used on milk, hasn't been used on anything else, and I sterilize it in my UV sterilizer every time. Okay, so 
it's all chopped. We're good there. Um, now I need to make sure the drain valve is closed. If you don't close the drain valve, you won't get a vacuum and it won't finish its job. It'll just air out and stay frozen like this. Um, so I'm going to add more dry time. Say, please close the drain valve. Okay, I already know. One step ahead of you, bro. Continue. And it wants my vacuum pump to cool. So it's going to restart in 37 minutes. That's how long it needs to cool, I guess. So we'll be back then, and then we're going to add 12 hours. All right, so it kicked back on, and I'm going to go ahead and bump this up to about 12 hours so it'll be ready for me to check again tomorrow morning. There we go. As you can see, milk is in there, milk is drying. All good. And we're done. Ta -da! So now I just have to take it out, but you have to release the vacuum. Woo! Just make sure it's not near anything that's going to suck up. dry rag that I wipe the top with so that I don't get any water dripping onto my trays of dried stuff. These are really cold. So I'm going to get gloves on and then I'm going to deal with this because I don't want to touch anything. Okay, so got that. And I have pot holders I keep out here because these trays get really cold and they hurt. So one out and I am all done Whoop. so I'm gonna grab this I'm gonna double check oh, I need a pot holder it's cold chop it and double check it and then I'm going to put it in bags. So that's it for that part. <laughs>